The book review deluge continues. Hi, welcome to my channel. My name is Alana and I pretty much only review books on this channel. Um, but I did do a tag video last week because I needed to break it up. And in another couple of videos, I will be having another book haul because I, I'm not even going to, you know what? I just, if I want to buy a book, I'm just going to buy the book. I don't, I don't care. I mean, I could be buying other things with my money, right? Exactly. So <laughs> today's video will be a book review of Don't Tell Alfred by Nancy Midford. If you have not heard of the Midford family, they were in the English aristocracy and the daughters in particular were socialites, especially around the time of World War II. And one of the sisters knew Hitler. She was um, definitely a fan. And one of the others, I think, uh, was more of a Stalinist. The family is very, very fascinating. Granted, they were very, very young at the time. I mean, teenagers. And um, you can see if you were going on YouTube, you could Google the Mitford family and you would see, you could find interviews of them in their older life. So very fascinating, very complex. And so Nancy Mitford, one of the sisters, was a novelist. She actually wrote eight novels. And there are three in particular. So I'm going to be specifically talking about Don't Tell Alfred. But really, Don't Tell Alfred is, it's not really a trilogy. I wouldn't really call it that. But it is the third installment of the main characters, their main character recounting coming of age and then the kind of the routes that her cousins took when it comes to marriage and relationships and children. And then, so Don't Tell Alfred is the, the final installment of that. So let's back up in case you're like, who is Nancy Mitford? What are you talking about? I'm not going to review all three of these, but I'm going to give I mean, very like brief synopses, two, one to two sentences for the first two before I go into Don't Tell, Al Tell Alfred. First of all, these Penguin editions, do you see these covers? <clears throat> so good. I need, When I splayed eyes on these, I was like, I need it. I need it now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So the first one is The Pursuit of Love. There are ne Is there a Netflix series for these or a movie coming out? I'm never, I haven't watched them. Don't know if I will. But so The Pursuit of Love is where your main character, Fanny, is very young. And then she, it's a bit of a coming of age. And then Linda, her cousin. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not going to spoil anything. But this is pretty much young girls obsessed with love and marriage and they daydream about their weddings and who they're going to marry but it's it's comical and so Fanny lives with she she's really taken care of more by her aunt uncle distant relatives cousins because her mother is called the bolter yeah she's mm -hmm. As in she just bolts from one man to the next. And she is known in English society as the bolter. So it's just, it's just funny. Uncle Matthew is, he's, you know, like a manly man. He's a gentleman, but he's really rough around the edges in a lot of ways. He served in World War, did he serve in World War One, Something like that. He, he served in wars He's this, this grumpy, crotchety old man, <laughs> man. And then we have Uncle Davy, who was pretty much a hypochondriac. This is so funny, but it's really about Fanny focusing on Linda and the decisions that her cousin Linda makes and how this all culminates to this really dramatic conclusion for this particular book. Then we have, my neck hurts, <laughs> Love in a Cold Climate, in which we get Fanny's side of things in the sense that even though yes fanny is narrating in in the pursuit of love we get how um where and where the pursuit of love focus on focuses on more linda's love life this is fanny recounting her love life and who she ends up marrying and so again it's funny it's witty there's uncle matthew there's davy and it's just good fun it is the whole little 
trilogy, I still don't, I wouldn't really call it a trilogy, but the whole um, trifecta of these books, it's very upper class aristocratic English society and it's a bit snobbish in that way, but that's part of its charm because even Nancy Mitford is kind of poking fun at her own, her own class. But we do get how Fanny is Fanny's own love life. And then there is a cousin here who, Polly, who ends up marrying her uncle. Yeah, the drama. And a lot of the things, some of the, the plot points and the relationships in these books are actually hearkening to specific people in in Nancy Mitford's life she just changed the names and they were definitely uh her family was not necessarily the most pleased with her and so then we have Don't Tell Alfred which is the book I'm specifically talking about today if any of the very vague premises of these books sound interesting to you my, there's a hair poking me in my eye I am going to link below a link to a podcast from the Diving In Podcast is these two ladies who they just sit down together, they're friends and they chat about books and they have really amazing Australian accents. <laughs> and they did a whole series on Nancy Mitford and that's how I ended up reading Nancy Mitford. And it is really, really funny. They go into a lot more background about the Mitford family and so you get more of an understanding about where these books are coming from and how to read them a certain way and how to read into these characters a bit more, I would recommend listening to that podcast first and then diving into these books. Don't Tell Alfred continues the narratives of Fanny. And you do get a little bit of sprinkling of her Uncle Matthew, Uncle uh, Davy makes, a, makes an appearance here or there, but it's really about Fanny. Fanny is grown up, she's married. If this is not a spoiler, Alfred is her husband. And they're middle-aged now. So Fanny, though she does come from a well-to-do family, Alfred is really from a well-to-do family. He's an Oxford man and he's definitely an academic. And Fanny is not that type of person who typically cares too much about being the most fashionable, which is important in, um, in this particular book. And they have children, they have sons. I believe they have four sons. Two of them are definitely young adults. And then we have two teenagers or two entering into the teenage years, preteens. And so her husband has been appointed in this book as the English ambassador in Paris post World War II and during the rising tensions between the West and the Soviet Union. So that is the landscape that this particular book takes place in. Fanny, again, like I said, she did grow up wealthy. She is now mingling with royalty and the ultra rich of French society because obviously her and her husband have to move to Paris because he's been um, given this ambassadorship. So now Fanny is thrown into this world of high class French society and the other people in this society trust, I mean, they're, they're decked out in Dior and Couture and there's Fanny who definitely harkens back to the more English style of clothing, tweeds and a lot more simple, not quite so dramatic and ostentatious. And so she's kind of navigating that social realm of things, but it really is a humorous novel about Fanny's domestic drama with when her husband is serving as the ambassador of Paris. What's funny is the former ambassadress, ambassad, ambassad, the former wife, the wife of the former ambassador, bam, because that, that, that's a tongue twister, refuses to leave the embassy home because it's just, could you, I mean, come on, you're living in an embassy home in Paris. That is one dust. That is one bougie house. I mean, would you want to leave? Nah, I wouldn't want to leave either. And so she's dealing with that and, be, and the press are loving it. The press are creating or writing all these articles. So um, they spin ta the, the press spins tales about Fanny and her husband. Fanny hires a young secretary named Northy and Northy is rambunctious and she's popular among the lads. That's all I need to say. And Fanny's sons do make an appearance. And her sons, especially the older two, are quite wayward. They're finding out what they want to do in life. And I guess which is common with upper class 
youth, really across any generation, it doesn't matter. They kind of look at the traditional way in which their parents do things and try to create images for themselves outside of that. So of course the press loves this too, because two of her, her two oldest sons are, they're wacky, not gonna lie, they're a little wacky. And so you, you get that interesting dynamic all while navigating or all while this is happening with the tension of the Soviet Union in the background, you do get some conversations about the political landscape at this time. And I will, will say I found those sections of the novel to be kind of boring. I, my eyes kind of glazed over. And I'm going to get into that in the, at, towards the end with this particular novel. I enjoyed it, but it was I didn't enjoy it as much as the first two. Really at its core, Don't Tell Alfred is a reflection on youth because we have the pursuit of love in Love in a Cloak Climate where you have Fanny and those in her family, her cousins, who are preteens, teenagers, and then young adults. And then you have this jump to Fanny in her middle age, as, uh, Fanny as a middle-aged woman. In the first two books, Fanny and her cousins are doing what young people do. They're exploring the world and relationships. They make decisions that are contrary to their upbringing. In some cases, some of the decisions that they make are a bit scandalous. And Fanny spends this book reflecting on how her children are behaving and how that's parallel, how that's a parallel to how her and her cousins acted, especially also how Northy acts. She's just, Northy is off the chain. Northy is funny. I think Northy is the funniest character in this particular book. Northy is off the chain. <laughs> and how we, and so this also goes back around to how we often mistake youth for invincibility. And I do have two quotes here that I'm going to read back to back. Until we were middle-aged ourselves, old age is outside our experience. When very young, of course, everybody grown up seems old. While the really old people with who we come in contact with who we come into contact seem more like another species than members of our own race in a different condition. Young people need urban life to exchange thoughts and see what goes on in the world. By degrees, the tempo slows down and we take to peaceful pleasures. So again, Fanny is reflecting on youth and age. And I guess also, you know, now that she's middle-aged in this book, she's reached that halfway point of her life and she's reflecting on what she, what her youth was like and what does life look like in the future for her as life tends to settle down even more as her children um, make their own decisions and settle down in their own way. Also, it's called Don't Tell Alfred because there are certain things that kind of pop up here and there in the novel where Fanny is like, oh, don't tell Alfred. So she's trying to smooth over some things in her domestic life, particularly with Northy and her sons that she want, she doesn't want to disturb Alfred with. So she's trying to smooth these things over. So that's one less thing that Alfred doesn't really have to think about. And also we don't, we don't, or things that she wants to keep from vexing Alfred. So let's just take care of it over here. Don't tell Alfred. So it's a bit of this running inside joke, but why it's called Don't Tell Alfred. This is going to be a short review. That's all I really have to say about this book. Because again, it's the third installment of two other novels. So I don't want to get too much into the weeds of this. And again, this is not a deep novel. These aren't really novels that require this really intense analytical review. They are somewhat lighter reads, they're comical, they're definitely conversations on the upper class uh, within the English society slash aristocracy. Nancy Mifford is just always a fun read. She's funny, she's witty, she's sarcastic, and given the really the lack of education that she received, her and her sisters received during the time period that they were, you know, in the early to mid 1900s, not, yeah, 1900s, I was like 1800s, no, too, too early. Early to mid-1900s, Nancy Midford is extremely smart. I mean, of course she knew languages, but for her to be able to weave these stories together in such a clever and funny way, she just was uh, naturally gifted to write. 
Her writing is, I've heard it described in that podcast, they described her writing, um, it's like crystal. And I agree with that because it is, um, there are some beautifully crafted sentences, but it's not overly flowery, but she has a way of just painting a picture of these characters, painting a picture of the time and place in which these stories are happening. And it's very, very evocative and tangible. So she's very talented at creating um, the structure that's within these stories and the characters. Her and, and it's just always fun also to kind of read about the crazy antics that these characters get up to. I mean, yeah, <laughs> there it's, it's 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 drama. This is rich people drama here. Okay, like like I kind of alluded to earlier, I didn't find "Don't Tell Alfred" to be quite as engaging as its predecessors. I think there's just something about the stories of them, Linda and Fanny and her other cousins and their perspective of Fanny telling these stories from her youth. Um, even it, well, maybe that's a poor way of saying that the stories of Fanny in her youth, um, in her cousin's youth, when her uncles were younger, her aunts were younger to me was just more entertaining. Those, even though this uh, Don't Tell Over was funny, I found the other two to be funnier. There were also passages, chapters, in which definitely whole chapters where I was a little bit bored with the narrative. I really could have done without the happening of the, you know, the political stuff in the background. I don't really feel like it added too much to the story. Um, and it just kind of, those sections dragged for me. So, and it did come to the point where the last two chapters of the book, I was getting bored. And so I just had to rely on the audiobook to finish it because I was starting to read and space out and not really contemplate or not really um, uh, process what I was reading. So I was like, you know what? I made it this far. I've got two chapters left. I do want to know what happens in the end, but let me just pull up the audiobook and wrap this up. So that's, that's what I did. Again, it's a fun, light read. It's a perfect palate cleanser, not just Don't Tell Alfred, but these three in particular, or Nancy Mitford in particular, is a really great palate cleanser between some of those heftier reads that I like to gravitate towards. That's that's how I typically choose. That's when I typically pick up a Nancy Mitford novel when I'm like, oh, I want something that I don't really have to think about too much. It's entertaining. It's well done. Really good writing. And then I can, you know, move on to the next thing. I do have all of her eight novels. So I've got three down. And I have five to go. I will definitely finish all of her novels. But again, unfortunately, Don't Tell Alfred just wasn't my favorite. I think it's it, Fanny's story was definitely fizzling out. And I got what I needed to get from Fanny. And I was I was happy to, to close the door on her on her story. I gave it a three out of five, which I think is, is, is a decent rating. It means I enjoyed it. I got something out of it. It just wasn't a favorite. I still highly encourage people who are interested in this type of maybe domestic fiction, female friction, friction, <laughs> hmm. saucy, female fiction from those interwar periods, World War One, World War Two, and then the Cold War. If you're interested in that type of fiction that you see kind of a rising within those interperiod war periods, people like um, Barbara Pym, definitely was well, that would be more in the 70s, but Barbara Pym, Elizabeth Taylor, these stuff, English domestic writers, sorry, female English authors of domestic fiction, Elizabeth Taylor, Nancy Midford, Dorothy Whipple, those type of authors. I highly recommend that you pick up Nancy Midford because she's just, she's just good fun and she's entertaining. And you don't always have to, you know, sometimes we don't always have to read things that are super heavy and bog us down. So that is all I'm going to talk about today. My review for this is also going to be linked down below on either Instagram or my blog. My blog runs behind because I typically go in on the back end after I kind of have these massive reviews I have to post and then I post them all at once, but it's just a matter of sitting down to do it, which I'm behind. So whatever you go my stuff goes live on instagram first so i'll post a link to whatever it is but if you want to follow me on instagram i'm active very active on instagram instagram is uh where i post funny memes and chat about books pretty, pretty much all the time <laughs> so you can follow me there and stay tuned for the next video my next video will be 
my review of To the Lighthouse, which is going to be by Virginia Woolf, which is going to be a very, very long review. So that's all I have to say to do. A quick and easy review. Thank you for watching. If you like my videos, like, subscribe, and leave me a comment. And I will talk to you guys in the next one. Bye.